Today's project is lined tab backed curtains for my kitchen. I've shown you the fabric before. I made a little blanket out of part of this fabric, so I'm going to use up the rest of my beautiful shabby chic sort of cabbage rose um, fabric and make some curtains. So I'm going to just take you straight to the cutting room, show you how I measured for what I'm doing, and start making the curtains. They're actually not very difficult other than they're huge pieces of fabric that are a little unwieldy. Otherwise, not so bad to work with. The first thing I did was measure how long I need my curtains to be. So I wanted them to not puddle on the floor. This is for a kitchen. I want them to either be to skim or just be above the floor. So I measured from below the molding at the top down to the floor. It is eight feet, eight inches. So that would be my finished curtain length. Then I need to add fold over at the top and the bottom for hem, etc. Here's my fabric and my lining. I have lots of it. Um, I'm going to just use the width of the fabric. So you can see it's almost as wide as my cutting table, but I'm going to cut it about nine feet, six inches. So nine and a half feet per panel is what I'm gonna cut of this one. This one's going to be just a little bit shorter because I don't need the turnover with this. This one's gonna be caught underneath. So I'm gonna be cut, cutting this more at like nine feet. Not going to need the six inches on this piece. I've already trued up one edge of this. Here it is. Here's my edge where I have pulled a thread to make it true. So this is the edge I'm going to measure down from. I'm gonna just cut two panels of this and two panels of this. I'm also going to make my little tabs in the back out of this. It won't be seen and I just think it's easy. So that's what we're going to do. All right, I have cut a long strip. This is going to become the tabs. I might need a second one, I don't know, but it's six inches right now. And I'm going to cut it into little strips like this, make tubes so that they're um, already kind of self-lined and then we'll have our tab part. So that's this piece. And then I have two huge long panels of each of these fabrics. This one ended up being nine inches, or nine feet, two inches. This one was nine feet, six inches. So it's just a four inch difference. And that's because this has to be hemmed at the bottom. Um, so I wanna have plenty for hem but it doesn't have to have as much turnover at the top. It actually gets caught in the top of this turnover. So that's what's missing. That four inches is actually what's gonna get caught in this. So now that all of that has happened, um, the next part's at the ironing board. We're going, oh, actually I take that back. We gotta take off all of these selvage edges. All selvage needs to go. So we're gonna just trim right next to, and it's really easy to see, you can see where the color changes, so I'm just gonna trim off right where that white line is all the way across on all these. So I'm just gonna sit and cut, cut, cut. If you have a rotary cutter, use it. And then the lining is nice because I was able just to tear it, um, but you can't tear the selvage off. But the selvage, it's woven much more tightly in the selvage than it is here. So I still have a nice line that I can follow to cut. So that's next, then the ironing board. Um, all the prep work is what matters when making curtains like this. All right, I'm gonna cut selvage for a bit. All right, let's talk tabs first. I've taken my six inch strip and I've cut it into pieces that are about three and a half exactly, three and a half wide, so that when I sew them up on my serger quarter inch, then they are a three inch tube wrapped around. And then I center that seam, I pull it through so this, this seam is on the inside, and I press it so that I end up with this little tab that is now an inch and a half wide. Perfect, exactly exactly what I want. So these, these are the steps. Tab, sewn, I've surged it, and then flipped and pressed. And I always press my seam to the center. It's just where I prefer it, I just think it looks nicer. These are gonna get caught in the top header seam so that seam is going to have it's going to be very interesting when i show you you'll catch this the lining and the header will all get caught together and then this will flip up so if this is my let me find my there we go this will get caught in the seam it'll flip up this way and then this will get 
top stitched down and that'll enclose our little thing and nice and pretty. So I'm gonna finish making these really quick. Uh, down here's my pile where I have trimmed off all of my selvage edges and now we're going to, after I get all these made, I'm going to start pressing down headers and hems on all of this. I have my pressed ones and these are the ones that are turned that I'm getting ready to press. It's just a little factory of tabs. Yay, I'm working on curtains now. I have all of my little tabs made. Now I am folding down one inch. This is the top of the curtain. Here's my pattern so I can see this is the top of my pattern. So this is my top. I'm going to fold in one inch. I'm just pressing it. And then I'm gonna fold down again another four inches and press that. That's going to be my header. I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. I'm not sewing anything yet though. I'm only pressing. So I'm doing one inch and then four inches top and bottom on the outer on my fashion fabric. Editing Stacy from the future. I somehow missed the little part where I showed hemming the bottom of the lining. So I turned up and hemmed my lining before this step. I somehow just, I don't know where it is. Footage is missing. So that's missing this little spot right here. We are back on the floor. I've got my panels on top of each other. This is how it looks, right sides together. So this is the bottom panel. Hopefully, I'm gonna double check myself to make sure, yes. So this is the hem. I've hemmed my lining, and I've hemmed it so that you can see it's about two inches above the bottom where I have turned up for the lining of, or the hem for the curtain. So here's my curtain hem pressed, that's it. I'm lining them up, and what I'm going to do now, so this side seam all the way up, but I'm not going to catch this. So I'm just going to sew it like this. Okay, so I'm not catching the hem of the actual curtain. I'm gonna sew both side seams all the way up. At the top, I also cut my lining too long. I had to cut off a little bit. I did my math strong. There's lots of maths when making things like this. So here you can see, here's the top for my header. And there's the hem. So all of this is just gonna get sewn up. We're going to do a little finish on this corner, corner so that each corner is gonna be finished, top and bottom. And then it's top stitching, hem, top stitching this, putting in the um, little tabs. It actually is gonna go pretty fast. This is sort of the long wieldy part. After this, it'll get a lot easier. We're at the sewing machine. I'm sewing with a half inch seam allowance. I'm not catching the header. See, the header's folded back up. So I'm at the top of this curtain right now. All of this is gonna be sort of inside the header. It doesn't really matter as long as it's caught. I left it nice and deep. Editing Stacy one more time because I somehow did not mention on the header of a curtain, often it is interfaced or you have some sort of buckram or something in there to make it nice and stiff to stand up. I did not do that intentionally because I wanted a soft, not quite rumply look, but kind of, because it was going in the kitchen, I wanted a very casual look, even though it is a formal curtain with an um, even pleat. So I did not put anything extra in my header other than the excess of the lining that sticks up inside there. So where I'm showing that little spot of the lining, all of that lining is up inside the header. It doesn't add a lot, but it does add a little bit. And then I, of course, I have two layers of the outer fabric plus the hem, which also makes it a little stiffer. However, if I were doing this for my formal dining room, I would definitely put a nice stiff, um, medium weight really, um, interfacing in there just to keep that header nice and tall and it wouldn't fall or you won't have any issues with it. But as long as you make sure that when this is folded over, it gets caught up inside here, that's what matters most when calculating <clears throat> how long it needs to be. So I'm just going to stitch my half inch all the way down, all the way down. Remember this is eight and a half feet long to here. And again, not catching the hem yet. I'm just kept going on the inside for now. We're gonna come back and finish this edge off later. I also changed thread colors. So I did hem both of the lining hems first. Now I've switched to thread that actually matches the outer curtain 
and that's what I'm going to use for the rest. One more note about sewing such a long seam is that you will get creep between your two layers. So most likely your top layer will seem to grow while the bottom layer seems to shrink. And you may get to the end and find out that you had pinned it perfectly so that you had this wonderful two inch difference and then when you get there it's actually grown. It can grow two inches um, because you're sewing such, you know, so many feet. But if you have a walking foot or an even feed foot, use it, it will help a lot in keeping you from getting the creep between the two layers on a super long seam. I've made it to the bottom. Okay, here's my hem. And I've unpinned this and now we're going to fold this up and sandwich that. See my little line here? We're gonna make sure we get that perfectly even. And we're gonna go ahead and just sew this down. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this whole half inch seam allowance from here down. And then when I flip it around, it'll have finished this little edge off and then I'll be ready to do this hem. So let me do this and I'll show you what it looks like. Here it is stitched. So when I flip this around, see how the hem is caught? So now the right side of the curtain, so here, this is the inside of the curtain, which is where I'm getting ready to sew this hem. Here's the outside, I haven't pressed anything. And you can see how this is caught on the inside and will fold to the back. So when it's all finished, this is what it's gonna look like on the inside. Here's our hem, which will be hemmed all the way up here. Just fold this out of the way to do the hem. And this will cover it. So now everything looks nice and pretty and finished on the inside. So we're also gonna do this up at the top. I'm at the bottom now, but I'm gonna do the same thing at the top. And we're gonna do the same thing as far as the hemming, but on the top when we do it, this is gonna actually get caught on the inside. So. Let me get the other side of this done and I'll show you how to do the top. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and finish our hem now, the hem of the actual curtain. Here, we flipped the inside. You can see everything's caught. And I'm just going to move the lining out of the way and we're going to just top stitch down this hem. Now you could blind hem it, you could whip stitch it. I don't mind top stitching it. It really pretty much disappears. My thread color um, is close. And these are sort of a casual curtain. These are not super formal, so I, I don't mind top stitching on them. But if you were doing a velvet or, you know, a brocade or a silk that you were making a really formal looking curtain, then you may not want to see your hems. Um, that's sort of up to you. But I'm, anyway, I'm just going to top stitch this down on this curtain and then we'll go up and finish up the top. Here's my little trick when I have to do a super deep hem like this. Here's my folded edge on the inside and I want to top stitch. I want it to be on the outside that I'm top stitching on the right side. So I want to make sure I'm about three and a half inches. I fold it up four so that gives me a little bit at the top. So um, three and a half to three and three quarters inch deep hem. I put down a piece of tape to line up my edge with and then I can keep it nice and straight when I'm stitching. Just a quick close up of my hems so you can see how they look. Here's the lining hem and here's the curtain hem. And this is how it looks on the inside. And of course, this is going to come around and hide it anyway, so you won't even see it. I have got a big wad of curtain here, but the hems are in. So I'm just gonna show you sort of the side seam here. This is how it's looking right now. And this is the inside. You can see all my seams. So now we're going to flip this around. Now I've not done anything at the top yet. So we're flipping everything around. And this is when I would give it a nice pressing on those side seams. Giant dog just appeared. Hi, sweet girl. Hi, she's my sweet girl. Yes. Okay. So we're flipping this around. And I'm going to press everything. I'm trying to find the top. So here's my top. Here's my top. And this is going to fold around like this, but I want all of this on the inside of it. Okay, so we're going to now fold down. We want this to the side when we do this. We're going to fold this down and kind of like we did before where we um, finished it, but we're going to have this to the side so that when we flip this around, this will go to the inside. Okay, so we're going to pull this out. We're going to fold this down on our seam and we're going to restitch right here and you want to make sure that you get right past this old stitching line, okay? So that we're not going to have a little piece of white hanging out. So let me put a couple pins in this so you can see what's going to happen. This is where our seam would be. See how this is out to the side? 
we're going to stitch right next to, and you can actually flip it over and see your stitching. And then when we flip around this header, all of that lining now, see it goes up to the inside, ta-da, like that. And then we're going to smooth everything out, make sure it's nice and flat. And before I sew this down, I'm going to put my tabs in, make it nice and even, and we're going to top stitch across this whole thing with the little tabs hanging down. The tabs are done a lot like a belt loop or a belt carrier if you've done that before. So this is going to be a lot like our waistband with a belt carrier in it. So anyway, we're going to do the tops now of our curtains just like this. So both corners, we'll pull the lining out to the side. I turn it to the side, it makes it easier to see. And now that that's turned to the side and we fold it over right sides together, our little header, we're going to sew our half inch again. And I often will sew just right next to it onto the curtain side, not the seam allowance side. So just right next to that to catch everything so that this will fold to the inside. And then we'll be ready to actually finish our curtain at the top. We'll put in our tabs and do our hems at the top and we'll have a curtain. I have pressed and I always pull slightly over. So see how it doesn't meet right at the edge, but I have a little bit of my right side of the fabric, my right side of my curtain pulling around, and that's just for neatness. There's a lot of ways you can even make this um, a lot deeper so that you have a whole lot more fold over. I just, again, casual curtain in a kitchen. This is actually just a corner piece. It's not even going to cover the window. It's just corners for, for cuteness. So, and then I have smoothed up all of the excess to the top and pinned it to hold it. And now we're ready to start putting our tabs in. All right, this is how it looks to have the tabs tucked into the header. Here's the top of my curtain and I've tucked my little tabs in. Now my tabs are six inches long. I don't need them that long other than I just want to make sure I have plenty of seam allowance. See, the other one's gonna come up like this to be top stitched. It's gonna kind of hang like that, but it'll hang from the top up here. Now I'm going to actually pull this up and um, anyway, it's gonna to get top stitched at the top like that and you won't be able to see it from behind. Just, just all the things we want to make it nice and even. The hardest part is getting these evenly spaced. Now, the, it's really important that they're evenly spaced because this is how they're going to fall. So between my pins here, if I pull this out, if I put pin on pin like this, this is how deep my curtain um, is going to, it makes an even pleat or gather. So this was, this is how deep the pleat will be if it's closed up real tight, but it, because the tabs are evenly spaced, it's going to evenly space those pleats. So the curtain always looks nice hanging on the rod. So these, and I always never, I never put one at the very end, I always come over um, an inch or two inches. This is, I think about an inch and a half from the edge, just so that it have a nice little flat piece here. Um, before it starts, before the uh, the first tab starts. It just is another way to make it lay nice and flat. But now I'm ready to go ahead and just top stitch this whole thing in. These are approximately five and three quarters apart. It took some math for me to get this figured out between, you know, the width of this. And I what I did is I marked the middle and I kind of just did eyeballed it and got it pretty close should look really pretty hanging up. So I'm gonna go ahead and top stitch this. Then I'm going to fold these up like so. And I'm gonna do another top stitch to catch the top of these. And this curtain will be done. All right, so I've sewn down here. We're folded up and I've just pinned down one inch from the top. I'm gonna to stitch about an inch and a quarter or so. So it catches this. And that gives me a header at the top and it also catches my little tab. So I've got them all pinned. So I'm going to sew on the right side and we'll have a completed curtain. The curtains are completely done. I have both of them done. I'm going to just flip this so you can see. This is what the back looks like where the tabs are at the top. And I've pressed it. I always give it another press once it's hung, but they're completely lined. They're ready to go up but I don't have my rods on yet. So we've got to go make our little corner rods and hang them up and my hubby's going to help with that. And then I'll show you how they look in the windows. I don't know if I mentioned this, but these are not curtains that I'm going to close across the window. They're actually 
um, side panels. So they're just going to go, I have a corner bay went in the bay window and I'm putting them in each corner of that bay just to add some vertical interest, some texture, some color to liven up this space. So now to make our rods and hang them up. When I looked into buying corner curtain rods, I realized they were very expensive and were not the right size for my corner. So we bought one inch dowels, brackets, and finials, paint and glue to 